Oh man, I need the latest, greatest fancy graphics tablet or an iPad to make good digital art. Whoa, wait, stop the video. Is, is that true? Today, I'm going to be taking this, the cheapest graphics tablet that I could find on Amazon, and I'm gonna be seeing if we can use this to make good digital art. Hello, my name is Brad, RV Tech for Creative Professionals, and something I see all the time in new illustrators and even some seasoned professionals is that we get caught up in our tools a lot. We think that we need the latest and greatest tech in order to take our art to the next level. So today, I'm, I'm actually gonna put that to the test. I'm gonna go here to Amazon, and I'm just gonna look up graphics tablets, and we're gonna see what we find. So right off the bat, the type of things we're going to see is like this basic $50 graphics tablet from Huion. This is a pretty good one. This is very similar to one I reviewed recently. $50 is a good price, but you're also going to see these other graphics tablets that have screens built in. Now, the difference is, is not just in the price. Obviously, if you're drawing on a screen, that's going to be more expensive because the components are going to be more expensive. Whereas a standards graphics tablet is going to be a lot cheaper because you don't have the screen. You're just drawing on the pad and your line is appearing on the screen in front of you, but it's going to take Take more practice to get used to drawing on something like this, whereas a screen-based tablet is just going to feel more natural to you. Doesn't mean you can't use a standards graphics tablet. A lot of professionals do. Just takes a little more getting used to. I'm going to scroll down a bit here. We've got a $40 one. We have a $33 Gaoman. Uh, we have some others here, smaller Huion. So, so we see the price range for these non-screen tablets kind of being around 40, 50, 60 dollars. I'm gonna go up here and I, I'm going to sort by price. Low to high, please. What on earth is this? One dollar and 88 cents. What is this? Let me go back. There are like a whole bunch of these. We've got gloves, we've got replacement nibs, but we've got these other graphics tablets. Can I actually use that? Okay, I fell down that hole a little bit. These are actually kind of like etch-a-sketch type things. Not at all what we're looking for. I'm going to do a different search here. I am going to search for Huion because Huion makes the least expensive tablets out there. Let's take a look at what they have. Now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna sort price low to high and we have extra nibs we have the gloves you can get and here we go the cheapest one they have is the huion 420 osu graphics tablet 24 dollars. that's that's not bad i i actually used that today we're gonna do something a little bit different we're gonna spend one dollar more and we're gonna see if this is better this is the new version of this tablet this is the huion h420x OSU tablet. Now the old one was several years old. The pen was very wobbly. It wasn't nearly as good. This is using Huion's newer pen tech. So I'm really curious if we spend that $1 more, how much more quality are we going to get out of this thing? Just for fun, the other brand that has uh, really good prices is called XP Pen. Let's sort by low to high here. And we have replacement cords and gloves and pens. And the cheapest thing they have is their star, which is $39.99. That's gonna be a little bit bigger. That's gonna be solid, but it's also gonna be more expensive. So let's go with the Huion. I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my cart. Okay, now all we have to do is wait. Two days. I don't even have a watch on. While we're waiting, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Surfshark. For those of you who don't know, Surfshark is an award-winning VPN service that keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all the information sent between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal data protected from big companies and cyber criminals. While Surfshark VPN is great for safely browsing on a public Wi-Fi connection, it's also a powerful tool for preserving your privacy at home as well. We all know that we're being targeted and tracked when we're online. A VPN can protect you from that. Surfshark's clean web does a great job of blocking ads and trackers and malicious websites. It also hides your IP address, which makes it harder for bad actors to target you. This not only keeps you secure, but it comes in handy when you want to stream content that's only available in a specific location. Surfshark works on your computer, tablet, phone, and even your game console. And Surfshark is the only VPN that you can use on an unlimited amount of devices. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. Use my code, Colbo, to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Click on the link in the description to get started with Surfshark today. All right, so here I have it. Here is the Huion 420X 
um, or is it X420? I don't remember, uh, but this thing is tiny. The drawing area on it is smaller than the trackpad on my laptop. Um, that's going to be interesting to see how that works out. It comes with everything you need, which is basically a pen and the cord to connect it to your computer. And then you go and you download the software and you install it and you reboot your computer and boom, you have it in here and, and you can draw with this pen. There's pressure control. In fact, this is the pen that Huion has been packing in with all their high-end devices as well. So, so let's go to the screen. Let's take a look at how this draws. So here we have Photoshop open and pressure sensitivity looks good. You know, my initial thoughts are this is pretty impressive. Um, my lines look solid. Uh, let me draw a little bit slower. I think I see a little wobble. It's hard to tell if that's my hand or the tablet. There's a little bit of both going on in here. Some of this is my hand, some of this is the tablet. Um, part of it is with this really small drawing area. I find it very hard to like kick out the wobble from my hand, if that makes sense. For example, if you have a medium sized tablet, you're drawing across a longer area, which means you can kind of control that a little bit more. Whereas here you're making a tiny line and it's making a longer line on your screen. So it's a little harder to control. I'm gonna open up a file from Creative Cloud here because I wanna draw in a document or, or a finished piece of art that I've used before. Here we go. Hey, it's, he's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna turn that off and I'm going to toggle on another layer, kick up the pencils a little bit so I could see them a little bit better. And I'm going to zoom way in and I'm going to try to ink this fellow. Now, as I said before, it does take a little bit more, you know, precision here because I'm drawing in one place and my pen is actually appearing somewhere else. I personally find it much easier to draw on a screen-based tablet, but let's see how this goes. I'm gonna turn on my brush. Let's uh, shrink this down a bit. Start with that chin line. Okay, I could do this. Yeah, this is gonna work. So overall, oof, the one thing I miss is being able to tilt the screen, which is something I am very familiar with doing on an iPad. And so what a lot of people do when they're drawing on something like this and they can't get the angle right is they'll control Z a lot. And yeah, it is a little hard. Oh gosh, this is difficult. Part of it is just the screen size is so small. I think I'd have a much easier time uh, with a larger screen. I feel like the pen lines themselves are looking okay, uh, but my hand just has to make such small marks in order to do anything here. Let me see if I zoom in more. Do I have more control? Let's do his mustache here. I do have more control over this when I zoom in. I'm just gonna keep inking here for a minute and then I'll be back to talk to you. All right, I've had the chance to use this for a little bit, so this seems like a good time to check in to see how this is going, and I feel like I am in the flow. You know, like I said before, this does take some getting used to. You do have to jump in here and practice a little bit to get used to the lines, but now that I am used to the size, this is coming together, you know, pretty well for me, and I'm starting to feel comfortable after using it for 10 minutes or so. Whoops. Um, I am seeing some areas... That are, that are harder for me than other areas. Let me zoom out and let me uh, toggle off the pencils so we can see the inks a little bit better. First things first is I did zoom in so that I could draw those lines. I just felt like I had so much more control when I zoomed in. Oftentimes when I'm using a tablet like this, I like to zoom out because I, I feel like I just get better curves and things like that. And I could see that happening here. The places where I had the most trouble when I was drawing were, were his helmet, were that, that initial hammer that I was drawing of his, the shoulder pads where I had to get a big long curve going on, that's where I was having trouble. I was having better luck with some of that detail work. And I think some of that would just be getting more practice and getting, getting familiar with this tablet. Overall, however, the question that we set out to answer at the beginning of this was, can you create solid professional level art with the cheapest or second cheapest drawing tablet that you're gonna find on Amazon? I, I feel very confident in saying yes, absolutely. But like everything, 
It takes time and it takes practice and you're gonna have to dedicate yourself to doing this. What's important to know is that if you've never drawn on a screen tablet or an iPad or anything like that, no matter what tool you pick up for the very first time, as soon as you start drawing, and I, I'm speaking from experience here, what you're gonna notice is your art is gonna look the same on that new device as it looked on the old device. And uh, the initial thought you're gonna have is, okay, this is a little disappointing. In fact, in many cases, your art is gonna look a little bit worse when you first start drawing on a new device because you're not yet familiar with it. You're not comfortable with it. It takes time. And this goes back to that old adage that many professional artists will tell you. It's not the tools, it's how much practice you have using those tools. I think that's the case here. With that said, that small drawing area, the, the hardest thing I was having trouble with was my hand was getting cramped because I'm used to drawing in a bigger space. And here I was definitely drawing more with my fingers, trying to get keep my hand in that space than I was used to you know, drawing more with my arm. So that was something I missed. So if you can, I would definitely recommend jumping up to a slightly larger drawing screen area instead of using something this small. But I'm gonna say for now, hey, Myth busted. This thing works. What do you think? Have you ever used something this small? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.